Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to be in worship today. I'm Pastor Bruce. This is New Time United Methodist Church on this beautiful fall day, and it really is fall right now in uh, Newtown, Ohio. Um, I am not preaching this morning because I took a vacation week off, and uh, but I'm, I'm going to ple please introduce uh, Taylor Hickey will be our, our guest preacher this Sunday, and then for quite a few Sundays, we're going to have Taylor preach for me whenever I'm I'm out of town or on vacation because uh, Taylor is right now, he's a candidate for ministry, he'll be going before the Board of Ministry next year, and we want to create a, a working relationship with another church. You're from Clifton United Methodist Church, aren't you? Correct. Correct, yes. Good friends at Clifton and wanted to give them another experience, so uh, I'm sure, this is, I've always found this to be a, a loving place to worship and to preach, so I'm sure Taylor will enjoy that too. Just wanted to say a few, oh yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, I was going to say thanks, Mom. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not Taylor's mother. It's just a, it's just a enthusiastic support of this congregation. I did want to mention again, uh, we're currently again requiring masks during worship. I'll put my mask back on after the announcement. Taylor will have his mask off while I preach, but basically this is a way to keep everybody safe and secure. I encourage you to keep up with the vaccinations, and thank you, a vaccinated or not, thank you for wearing your mask during worship. We appreciate that. And. Uh, just also want to, uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, hopefully if there's somebody in the parking lot, uh, you have the uh, your car radio tune and you can hear us at this point. Oh good, I'm hearing some more, that's great. <laughs> the parking lot ministry is continuing and again, encourage people to come to, do, to worship in that fashion as well as at home. I wanna share our joys and concerns right now as, as much as I have them. First of all, I wanna give you an update about Howard Preston. I talked with Joe Mann last night. Howard is at home. Recovering from recent hospitalization, Howard did suffer a stroke, and he's receiving uh, occupational and physical therapy at home. I know when I saw Howard in the hospital, his speech is very good. His his he's his mentally he's very sharp. Right now, he's just uh, one one leg is very weak and needs to be strengthened. And when Howard does return, uh, he's going to not only need to use a walker, but a, a, a walker, but also have to use a chairlift. But that's going to be somewhere down the road. But again, thank you for your prayers. Uh, his recovery is steady and sure. He misses you and he's just very appreciative of all of your love. Um, I want to uh, give Chuck Wingo an opportunity to give us an update about Nancy. Uh, thank you. Uh, status quo is almost the same. Uh, she's still in the hospital in Mercy. Uh, we believe that uh, this weekend uh, she's going to be able to make the decision as to charge her either to a facility in Mercy, uh, which will provide her physical therapy and all of that, or we may go to a, another facility for further physical therapy. She's uh, got a good spirit, and uh, she's not in any pain, and uh, so it's uh, now a case of uh, getting back to the point where she can uh, walk and stand. Thank you. Very, very thankful for Nancy's healing, and we want to pray for uh, more to come. I also want to mention, uh, we're we'll continuing to pray for Ray Kraft and for Estelle's Care Center. Uh, again, his recovery is steady and sure. Uh, last week, I mentioned a good friend of mine, Mark Owen. He came down with a very severe case of uh, COVID, and he was in hospitals and nursing homes for close to a month. He is now back home again, uh, using oxygen, but back home sounding, sounding much better. So thank you for keeping Mark in your prayers as well. Are there other prayer concerns or joys that you'd like to share today? Well, then keep these in your hearts and minds as we enter into worship by hearing the ringing of the bell and the prayer. Thank you. 
slide, forgive me because I'm short, so you just get the top part of my head. Please join me in the prayer of praise and adoration. Your praise is ever on our lips, O oh God. Songs of joy swell within us. We gaze at creation in the cold goodness. We hear of your covenant and discover righteousness. Your love is boundless, your care without limits. We enter your sanctuary to give you honor. We bow down before you with glad adoration. Receive our worship and accept our thanksgiving. You are God, whom we serve evermore. Amen. Every high priest taken from among men is appointed in matters pertaining to God for the people to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he is also clothed with weakness. Because of this, he must make an offering for his own sins as well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself. Instead, a person is called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not exalt himself to become a high priest, but God who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. During his earthly life, he offered prayers and appeals with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. After he was perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and he was declared by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Our second scripture reading is the gospel lesson this morning. It's taken from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45, and is found on page 44 of your pew Bible. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him and said, Teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask you. What do you want me to do for you? He asked them. They answered him. Allow us to sit at your right and at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? 
We are able, they told him. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink, and you will be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not mine to give. Instead, it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten disciples heard this, they began to be indignant with James and John. Jesus called them over and said to them, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in high positions act as tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you will be your servant, and whoever wants to be the first among you will be a slave to all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
I'd like to thank Pastor Bruce for this opportunity to come and bring today's message to everyone. And I would like to bring warm welcomes from all throughout the connection. As Pastor Bruce mentioned, I just finished seminary this past spring, and I've come back to Ohio after living in Chicago for three years. So last year, it was finally snow. It was already snowing on me, and I'm finally glad that the weather's a little bit cooled off as well. <laughs> but would you all pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Amen. So I was one of the larger kids growing up in elementary school, and one of my favorite games to play, activities to do, was musical chairs. Now, I had the advantage that I was the, one of the bigger kids, so I could get in there, in the chairs. And this was the 90s, so it was those steel chairs that would rock over and tip over, or maybe those really heavy elementary school chairs with the plastic seating and everything else that wouldn't tip over no matter what you did to them. But the excitement and thrill in that one moment when the music stopped and everybody took off towards those chairs was just something that I loved to do. I was also fairly competitive in anything that I did, and so I always wanted to win. Yet inevitably, the moment would come around when I wasn't the one to get a chair, when I was left at the end standing there. And I was out for that round. And if it was the last round, until we played again. And that's not a great feeling, you know, being left out, being told, you're out now. I see musical chairs also being played now. I enjoy hockey, so I will see in the intermission time, they'll bring out blowout chairs and have elementary school children go around and play musical chairs. And inevitably, you'll see disappointment on the faces of the kids as they aren't able to get a chair and have to go and stand behind the blue line while they quickly try and shuffle everyone through as the class and everything goes in. And it's this fear of disappointment, this wanting to avoid the you're out moment that I feel is solidly behind the action of James and John from today's gospel reading. Now, I don't know where, but I'm sure that this is replicated in many places in life. You're out because you said something odd. You're out because you not done the right action. You're out because the rules of the game tell you so. But in the end, you're out. You're the one who's been excluded. James and John clearly have been wanting to be in this. To understand exactly what's going on in this story in Mark, you have to understand immediately beforehand, Jesus gives the third time that he predicts that he will have death and resurrection. And this becomes really important because I've heard a lot of sermons, and it's really common to say that what James and John did was bad, was trying to exclude all the other disciples and place themselves over. Sure, they were probably doing that, but they were also taking the extraordinary step after Jesus had just predicted his coming kingdom to say, Jesus, we don't know what this kingdom is. We don't understand, but we want to be participants in it. And the only know, way we know how to be participants in this upcoming kingdom is to be there right with you, right next to you. Is it the best way to do it? No. But they said and did this extraordinary step of, I want to be in with you and be your follower. Now, one of the features of Mark is that it often points out how the disciples don't understand what Jesus is saying or do foolish things. The disciples are not the example for Mark of what the greatest follower of Jesus is supposed to look like. Yet in this moment, we ought to recognize that James and John said, include me in your coming kingdom, even though we don't understand what it is. And Jesus points that out to us as readers, as well as James and John saying, you don't know what you're asking. Now, at the time, the nation of Israel was under military occupation of the Roman Empire. And many people around Jerusalem, throughout all of Israel, thought that God was going to send them a military leader 
to unite the people together, overthrow the Roman legion by force with swords and spears, marching around and making them more powerful. <clears throat> Jesus had been trying to teach them a different way and pointing out that this was not the way to go in the coming kingdom. And he goes through this again with a point of, do you want to share the cup I have? Now, of course, cups can be used in celebration. When we drink in victory, when we recognize the victor, the first place person has done this. But then Jesus brings in this tradition of baptism. Now, baptism is not a new tradition per se. There are Jer Jewish purification rites that we know exist at the time. And there are desert movements away from sources of power. But by bringing up the baptism, the baptism that Jesus got from John the Baptist as well, he once again points out to James and John in that moment that what's coming is not what they expect, is not what they can anticipate, but it's what God wants in there. And then Jesus has to do the heartbreaking thing of saying, you can't be in my right and left hand. Now, we can see this as them being sent away heartbroken. But I like to think of it a, a, like this. Imagine Jesus' table, kingdom is a table right then. And at that moment, Jesus is sitting alone at the table with some chairs. James and John have come in and said, we want to sit down. And Jesus is like, okay, you can sit down in these chairs. Then goes and grabs two more chairs, opens them up and says, we have two more chairs for more people. Isn't this an opportunity, a chance to go out. Now, I love what happens next in Mark with the disciples going back and trying to tell them, ending up angering all the other disciples because it shows you, I think, one of the classic things that we go out and we will tell people and explain to them why we love our church, why we love what we do. And it doesn't always go through. And it sometimes takes Jesus coming in and explaining that the first will be last and the greatest will be the least. And reminds us that this is not something that we do alone, but this is something that we do with each other. It's why Jesus called all the disciples to him to continue on the spreading of the kingdom of God. And the reason why each of the disciples went out and built the church after Jesus' death. And I know in this time, I know personally that I've gone out many times and said the wrong thing and led people the wrong way or tried and done something the wrong and failed. And that's okay because at least we're out there. We've had to redefine almost everything we know these past few years because of the pandemic that is truly actually once in a lifetime thing. I've lived through, I don't know how many once in a lifetime, once in a decade, once in a century rain events and everything else. And so the term gets thrown around a lot, but we're working together to build a different community than the one we had a few years ago. But the wonderful thing is, through the example of Christ and the church, we know that the core of this community is care and love for each other. We've talked about going and visiting the sick, the members of this community who can't be here, carrying our love for them and making sure that they're included. But it's not just that. It's wanting to build, to take another chair down and say, you're included at this table now. You're accepted and welcome here, and then teaching them until somebody goes out. Now, sometimes we do this through working to meet people's basic needs, working with our local community food pantries, working with all of our community groups, showing our love for neighbor through civic action and everything else. But there are so many other things that can't necessarily be counted on a government report that matters deeply to. I know that when I'm out on a walk, seeing one of my neighbors out there and just saying hi on their morning porch with their coffee is such a great way 
to still maintain connection among people during this time when it seems like we're all driven apart by each and every little action. And so, that's one of the great things about this coming kingdom. In the Hebrews passage, it talks about being appointed a high priest and Jesus being appointed a high priest. But it also says God will continue to call those to ministry. And the fact is God will continue to call us on. Whether God is calling you today to say hi to your neighbor while they're mowing their lawn, saying hi to somebody as you're shopping in the street, or just giving somebody a warm glance as they're going about their day. We all know, and I'm sure we've all had many, many difficult days. But the warm glances, the smiles and the eyes, the love and care we still show for each other have been the thing that has sustained us. And at that core is the kingdom, is what Jesus talked about in love for each other and love for self. So I'd like to say that this will all wrap up sometime and we'll all be fine. But the matter of fact is, this is how life is. It's how we express and live out that love for each other. And that love for each other is lived out in different ways for different people. I know that my sister got married the year before the pandemic started, and I haven't seen her since with my brother-in-law because we live on opposite sides of the country, and she teaches elementary school teachers. <coughs> she teaches elementary school children as a teacher, and therefore, right now, it's not safe for me to go and visit her to want to see them. But it's also a way to go and share with other churches and other people I meet on the street in the gospel. So it's that extra chair that's the most important thing. I remember many times growing up in my grandmother's house at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, and other holidays, that there were always more chairs than there were people. Now, sitting here as an adult, I know that that might be because my cousins or nephews that lived three hours away in Frankfurt didn't drive down to the family gathering that year, but it's the lovely picture. And have you ever experienced a time when you're in an event with others, when you're at a meeting? when you have to go and get more chairs because there's more response, more involvement, and more love present in those moments than there were beforehand. It's that great feeling, not the feeling of being out, out of the game for now, being put aside, but being in, inviting somebody else and building up God's kingdom through love of neighbor and love of each other, that's what we're called to do and what the disciples, even though they don't understand it here, eventually get and carry out the church. May God go with each of us through today, through this very week, and give us opportunities to express love for each other I know that that's how we're, our society and how we're built, so that we can show love and appreciation of each other. And may we take the time to think about how best to respond and to show that love that we found in the past, that we will continue to find in the future, and that includes embraces and draws that extra chair down for us when it's needed to others as we go about our life. Amen. And now if you'll join me in the pastoral prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer, I will be praying for a subject, and there'll be a brief time of silence for you to raise in your hearts or allow names or individuals you would like to raise. But let us pray. O oh Lord of compassion, we pray for each other and for members of this community. 
We know that we are not all here and that we are spread out. We know that some of us are ill, some of us are well, some of us are excited for new things, and some of us need each other, the comfort of each other. But we ask now for this community, for its prayers, and for your sustaining, loving hand to be with us. And Lord, we pray for this city, community, and place. We pray for the leaders elected and those who lead in many other ways. We pray for your love, your wisdom, your guidance to be with them in each moment as they make decisions that impact us all. Help them to be guided to make us communities of love with each other. Lord, we pray for this world, for the earth, for the seas, rivers, lands, ground, and everything. Make us good stewards of the land so that we may be with it and it may be useful to us and us to you. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, our families, and our friends. Sustain us and bind us together so that we may be reflections of you to all that we meet in the world. And as we pray all of these things, we're we are reminded of Jesus who brought us together and taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And bless us day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
back to having ushers, but we know that you've sent your gifts in through the mail and can drop them to fill us whenever you get a chance. Lord, please accept these gifts with the intention that they are given to do your work here on earth. As we all know, it ultimately belongs to you. Amen.